So we just talked about the uh, relationship between polar and rectangular coordinates, and we have some conversion equations, and what we're gonna do now is convert uh, points from one to the other. Now, it's easier to go from, uh, from polar to uh, rectangular. <clears throat> you know, before we get into this, let's talk about uh, more, the reason that converting to polar uh, can be more difficult is because there is lots of representations for the same uh, point. So this is a problem only in polar coordinates. So polar coordinates have not just one or two, but they have infinite names for uh, any point. So let's take it easy. We'll just take a point A we looked at before, three comma pi over four. So we're just gonna look for uh, different names. So we saw how to graph this earlier, pretty easy to graph. Just gonna do a real rough sketch. <clears throat> so this is three comma pi over four. So there's our angle, pi over four, and go out three. So there's our point A right there. Now what we're gonna do is uh, look at other names I can give this point. What if I want to make the radius negative? What angle do I need to match up right here? Well, unfortunately, there's an infinite number of choices for the angle, but certainly whatever angle, whatever name I give it, the angle's going to point in the opposite direction. And what rotation do we need to get there? Uh, we need to be basically halfway off of pi over 4. So if I go this way, negative 3 pi over 4. If I go the other direction, which is start from zero and go to here, that's five pi over four. Now you can use either one. <clears throat> so there's one name for the point, another name for the point. So it's the same angle we're describing. Well, it's, it's the same direction, but it's measured in opposite ways. Now, why stop at uh, 5 pi over 4? What about negative 3, 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi? Now, of course, I could add 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, as many 2 pi's, as many rotations as I want. <clears throat> so we're going to start to summarize uh, these right here. So let's think about all the ones with a negative radius. Let's summarize. So all of these are going to be of the form negative 3, comma. You can pick which uh, angle you want to start with. Let's keep it positive. I'm going to go with the 5 pi over 4. And just like we did when we solved equations, we're going to add 2 pi k for any integer k. Now, if you think about this, when k is uh, 1, we're gonna get, oh, however many that is. When k is one, we'll get a five plus eight, 13 pi over four. When k is negative one, we're actually looking at this one right here. When k is negative one, you have five pi over four minus two pi, which is minus eight, so it's five. 5 minus 8 is negative 3 pi over 4, and that's the angle you see right up there. So <clears throat> this will cover every uh, single name of that point that has a negative radius right there. Delete all this stuff. So this is all the negative radii right there. Let's summarize. I didn't talk about uh, what to do to that angle, but... We can do the exact same stuff. We can add as many rotations or subtract as many rotations as we want. So this is our positive radii. Well, there's only one radius. So we're going with positive 3. Now, <clears throat> we can't choose the uh, 5 pi over 4 because it's going to point us in the wrong direction. We have to go with the pi over 4 now. And 
and allow for as many rotations uh, as an arbitrary number of rotations. So there we go. Those are all the names for this point A on the graph. So there's infinite right answers. Which one am I expecting? Well, the convention I'm going to use is make sure your radius is positive. So I prefer to not use the negative radius. It's not incorrect. It's just not the answer that I want. So the convention for, for this class, so is our notation, polar coordinate notation. convention make sure your R sometimes you'll need a zero a radius of zero but uh, keep your radius zero or more so don't go with the negative and also keep your theta I'm gonna be a little more flexible here uh, anywhere from negative 2 pi if you need to all the way up to positive 2 pi usually you're gonna just choose your radius between zero to two pi. But sometimes you might wanna go negative. Uh, some web work problems are going to uh, tell you negative pi to positive pi, something like this. They might close it on one end, open on the other. They may let you do close on both ends. <clears throat> you only, the minimal uh, interval to draw from is one period. So either way, you know, we're measuring periods slightly a weird way. Zero to two pi is the normal way to measure a period. But, you know, you could always also measure it from uh, pi to negative pi if, if needed. So just be a little careful if you're answering web work questions. They're going to be uh, maybe a little more specific about where they want their angles. Uh, but for me, if you're answering on, on a midterm, or I guess your final at this point, uh, Anywhere between a negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi will be acceptable. So I'm a little more uh, accepting than, than some of the web work forms. And same thing if you're doing problems out of your book, they uh, have rest similar restriction. So again, we're going to prefer this one right here. So let's go ahead and do some conversions. We'll go the easy way, polar to rectangular. The reason it's easier is because there's only one rectangular form to go to, so there's really no ambiguity whatsoever. And so our first one, six comma pi over six. I'm gonna keep angles uh, to ones that we're familiar with. And <clears throat> when you just see a point, it's not clear if you have a point that's in polar form or a point that's in rectangular form. Now in this problem, we're going to convert from polar to rectangular, so in context, this is a polar point. But when it's unclear, I'm going to write a little P-O-L. You could write out the whole polar, P-O-L-A-R. Uh, I'm going to use this notation to denote that this is a polar point and not a rectangular point. And what we're going to do is convert it to a rectangular. I'm not going to spell the whole rectangular word out, but we'll just go. Oh, let's keep it similar. We'll just go to rec. So we're going to go from pole to rec, and later we'll go rec to pole. Now, how do we go from one to the other? Right here, we need our formulas. Good news is the only two you really need are these two. So when you're going to rectangular, it's going to be super easy. You just need those two. X R cos theta, and Y is R sine theta. Rewrite those. Rewriting seems silly, except that every time you write it, it's going to get, uh, you're going to memorize it a little bit more. We got a radius. We have a theta. Now it just comes down to uh, plugging these in, writing down the values is correct. So our radius is 6, cos pi over 6, y equals 6 sine pi over 6. And now we just need to know our cos and sine values. Cosine pi over 6 is square root 3 over 2, which is 6 over 2 is 3, square root 3. And 
sine pi over 6 is 1 half, 6 times a half is regular 3. So we just write down x first, 3 square root 3 comma y second, which is 3. So there's our rectangular point. <clears throat> Another thing uh, I'm going to have you do on your final exam on this question is also graph. Now I don't have to specify which one to graph in because no matter which way you graph, as long as you convert it correctly, they'll graph to the same point. Just like we looked up here, this point A, no matter if I was calling it with rectangular or portal coordinates, it's going to be the same point A either way. So it didn't matter which way I, I measured in. And we've done a few uh, polar graphing in polars. Let's graph in rectangulars. You've done this plenty of times before. The only tricky thing is square root 3 is approximately 1.73. So 3 times square root 3. Ooh, bad at multiplying. Uh, man, let me break out the calculator. That's a, you know, I don't need a calculator. We'll just say it's 17 times 3. Oy. 1, 2. Let's see how bad I really am here. So it's 51, we'll get a little more from that decimal. Let's say 50, really 5.2. Uh, you can get out a calculator if you wanna be more accurate, but that's good enough for us. <clears throat> now we go to graph this, uh, we're gonna go over 5.2. Man, really inaccurate. Uh, so let's, I'm gonna write this three square root three and I'm gonna go up three. There's the point we're referring to. Uh, I just wanted to get the spacing, this horizontal spacing, reasonably accurate. So that's why I did that estimation up there. And this is our measuring rectangular coordinates. If we went to polar coordinates, I'll draw those in blue. Remember, it's the same point we're talking about. The only difference is your radius here will be six and your angle will be pi over six. So you're talking about the same point, you're just you're using two different languages to describe it, either the polar language or the rectangular language. Either way, you have a single point. That's really all there is to uh, converting from polar to rectangular. You got two formulas, really nothing more to it than that. So we're going to now convert it the other direction, which is uh, more difficult. So we're going to go from rectangular to polar. And again, if you're answering web board questions, be careful about the form they want it in. There's really only one choice for rectangular. It's x comma y. They're either positive or negative, depending on you know, what you get. Mostly positive and negative is dictated by where your angle, what direction you're going in. So I, I put easy quadrant one angle in, so everybody's positive, but this could have been maybe uh, seven pi over six, and that's definitely not a quadrant one angle. So we're gonna have a negative coordinate, maybe even two negative coordinates, depending on where your angle's pointing. All right, rectangular to polar, we'll do our first point right here. Oh, that's a weird point. Let's not do that one. Where are my example problems? All right, so I need a nice, some nice coordinates. Oh no, we can totally do a zero three. I don't know what I was thinking. This is a rectangular point. I'm gonna convert to a polar. And remember, we're going to our, our theta. We're starting with a x, y. These two formulas could be useful here, but I'm gonna write down uh, the other two that we have also. And we'll go Pythagorean first. This first one popped into my head. And tangent is y over x equals tan theta. All right, let's get the radius first. We're going to go with the convention. Radius should be positive. So when I solve this for r, we're going to take a square root. Now, normally we get a plus minus, but I want to keep the radius positive, so... Let's not go with a negative radius. Uh, occasionally, you may need to have a negative radius, but, but try to keep it positive whenever possible. So if I just plug in the x and the y, 
we're going to immediately have the radius. So here we go. X value, 0 squared. Y value, 3 squared is R. So we've got square root 9, which is regular 3. So our radius is 3. It's a little bit strange. The same number appears. <clears throat> means something very different, though. Remember, in rectangular, this is how far to go up. In polar, this is how far to go in this direction. So here we go. We're about to do the uh, convert the theta. So we have tangent theta is y over x. y is 3. x is 0. Ooh. We're divided by 0. So what does that mean? Undefined. There's two angles that have an undefined theta value. Let's think about the unit circle. It's always a good thing to go back to the unit circle and what we did at the very beginning of chapter 10. So where are the two points that have undefined theta values? They are right at the top and the bottom. So we either have pi over two. If I keep my angle positive, we got three pi over two, which I can't really try to squeeze that in there. That's hard to see. Oh, that's perfect. There we go. So pi over two or three pi over two. Which one of the two angles are we dealing with? Now we got to go look at the rectangular coordinates. So let's think zero, three. Which of those two points could we be talking about? And we're talking about the positive y-axis. So we're definitely talking about that point right there. So we're going to use pi over 2 for our angle right here. And of course, tangent of pi over 2 is undefined. So that matches with uh, that undefined we got before. Ooh. Pi over 2. All right, so that's rectangular or polar, and that's our answer right there, our polar coordinate answer. Now, again, there's infinite um, uh, correct answers, but keeping it in uh, a positive radius and keeping your angle uh, positive and small, 3 pi over 2 would be the way to go. When you're answering web work, again, make sure that your angle is uh, in the right interval that they're asking about. And the, the standard intervals I've seen are somewhere up here right there, usually 0 to 2 pi or negative pi to pi. So there's our first conversion. We're going to go for one more example now. <clears throat> we'll go, we're actually going to do two more of these problems. So we're going to convert negative 2, 2. So we're definitely getting out of quadrant one here. So x is negative two, y is two. We're gonna get the radius same way. Radius, uh, there's really not much going on to convert the, uh, to get the new radius. One word of caution about uh, negative signs. You're going to be squaring the x and the y coordinates. So the fact that x was negative is not going to have an impact on the value we're going to get for the radius. Because of that, what I see a lot of students do by mistake is only squaring the 2, not squaring the negative 2. So if you want to be uh, you know, very careful and, and fully write everything out, we're really squaring negative 2, which is going to be, of course, positive 4. What I recommend, because we're going to be squaring these out and that negative is going to disappear, just write down uh, the positive, the absolute value of, of that number, because you're going to be squaring it, so that negative is not going to have an effect. And same thing for y. Uh, y is 2, square that. So 2 squared plus 2 squared is 4 plus 4 is 8. If you really like to uh, factor out everything you can, 8 is 2 cubed which is 2 times square root 2. So there's our radius. I'm going to stick with the uh, square root 8. Now to get theta, how do we get the theta out? 
tangent y over r. Uh, feel free to use the uh, sine or cosine. It's totally, uh, totally okay to do that. You're just going to have to uh, think about the sine or cosine function instead of the tangent function values. So y over r is 2 over negative 2. Ooh, I don't know. So it's obviously not in the unit circle. You know, 2 and negative 2 are not values on the unit circle. We can reduce this fraction. Tangent theta, negative 1 over 1. Still not angles, uh, not sides I'm familiar with. And now these are sides I'm familiar with. What did I do to go from this step to the next step? Well, I don't, there's no point in the circle that's 1 and 1, or, or negative 1 and positive 1. But if I uh, multiply very carefully, by the number one, I chose this version of one because it's gonna give me two sides I recognize. The only trick now is that negative, is it in the numerator or is it negative instead in the denominator? It can go either way. So I'm gonna leave it out front. We have to decide which is negative. <clears throat> because tangent value is negative, that immediately puts us, uh, quadrant one is out. Quadrant three is also out because both are negative in quadrant three. So that would give us a positive tangent value. Now I can tell one over square root two, one over square root two, we're either halfway up here or halfway here. And I'm just using a lot of uh, geometric or trigonometric intuition right now. Uh, if you're a, a value memorizer, totally fine. Uh, you saw that tangent was negative one and hopefully in your brain, if you're a memorizer, your, uh, your memory is telling you, oh, that is uh, 3 pi over 4 or f 7 pi over 4. Those are the two names for these angles right here. If you're a geometric person uh, like I am, then you see this picture and you realize you're halfway into that quadrant, 3 pi over 4, or you're halfway into this quadrant, which is 7 pi over 4. If you want to measure that direction, totally fine. That would be negative pi over 4. How do I know which of these two points or which of these two angles to use? Now we need a little bit more information. <clears throat> this information comes from the original problem right here. So let's think about in rectangular coordinates, which of those two points could I be talking about? In rectangular coordinates, what quadrant does this point have to live in? And it is not ambiguous in rectangular coordinates. Because again, rectangular coordinates are great because there's no ambiguity. So this says negative x, positive y. So there's our x, there's the y. So x is negative, y is positive. We have to be using that point right there. So we're <clears> using <throat> uh, 3 pi over 4. Now, because the negative was on the x, we have, um, we have to be in quadrant 2.